Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our mini lecture series on the Koopman operator. What we've seen until now is a lot of theoretical concepts, and we have covered in quite a bit of depth the EDMD algorithm, how to approximate the Koopman operator in a finite dimension, a subspace that is spanned by a dictionary. Okay, so this is our Koopman operator definition for an observable function G. So the Koopman operator acting on this function is the same as evaluating the function at the x at the next time step, so under the flow f. And something that is very, very popular in the dynamic assistance community in recent years is the dynamic mode decomposition, which is well, in name obviously related, but we would like to make a little, little bit more clear what, what the relation actually is. Um, before we do so, here a very, very short recap. We also have a, a longer video about DMD and examples for uh, temperature, sea surface temperature data. The idea is very, very related to what we have in the Koopman operator. So we have a data matrix X. This is snapshots at m different points in time. Can be a time series, can also be unrelated. And we have this Y matrix, which is each snapshot propagated forward in time under the flow F. And the Koopman operator, or the, excuse me, the DMD matrix, which I'm going to denote by K DMD, is simply the matrix that minimizes this loss function. So the best fit matrix that maps every column of X to the column of Y. So least squares error, which is the matrix that maps X to Y with minimal error. And we all know this can be solved by uh, the pseudo inverse. So it's a simple linear multivariate linear regression problem. You multiply from the right by the pseudo inverse and this gives you K <coughs> or this K DMD here. And we can then go on to compute eigenvectors and eigenvalues of DMD and what we call the, the dynamic modes are the eigenvectors of this K matrix. And you know, I put a link to the other videos where we see how this can be done and how they look. Now we have the Koopman operator and we've seen that this extended dynamic mode decomposition EDMD is a powerful technique to approximate the Koopman operator. And the question that remains is, are they related? Uh, Name-wise, obviously they are. And so let's try to formalize this connection and, and give names from the Koopman world to names in the DMD world, which is actually quite easy. Um, so what we can consider is, um, first of all, we, we study snapshots from our state here. So first step is simply to define what is known as the full state observable. So what we're going to say is g of x is simply x. <clears throat> so this does not mean that the Koopman operator here is already a matrix because it still acts on a function, but it's the identity mapping function. Okay. So this does not change a thing. This is still an infinite dimension operator acting on a function space, only that we are now considering this full state observable. Right? So very, very important and popular for many applications where we have access to measurements of the full state. And what you can now do is, um, if we go at this vector wise, this is simply the ith Euclidean vector times the state x. Right? So we are really picking component by component of the state by this observable function. And then the Koopman operator still propagates forward in time this function. But if we do so, then we can proceed. We always know we have to lift our data in terms of a dictionary of um, the psi. And what you see now is the dictionary is actually these Euclidean vectors mapping to, to the individual components. So DMD is a very, very special case of extended DMD where as our dictionary psi we simply pick the individual coordinates of our full state. Right, so this is our the sum of the, the dictionary, or if you wish, this, the, this is the individual components of psi of x being x. <coughs> Excuse me. And so what this means is that we simply um, get psi transposed of x. Remember, this was always a row vector, is simply x. Or if we lift the data, this means our data lifted 
by this psi, this gives us just x transpose, right? So um, x1 transpose until xm transpose or x transpose. And in the same manner, obviously, y of psi y is also just y transposed, okay? So a very specific choice of a dictionary, and we have talked about the Koopman operator or EDMD being very sensitive to the selection of the dictionary. So if we're thinking about approximation, true approximation of the Koopman operator, this dictionary is often a very poor choice because it's simply a linear dictionary, so it's very, very restrictive, only works for linear systems. However, we can still try to extract these modes. Um, well, one should be careful in saying that this is really a Koopman operator approximation because it's, if we're not considering linear system, it tends to be a very poor approximation. Nevertheless, if we proceed this way, then we can just study how the Koopman matrix K is computed and put this in relation to the K DMD matrix. Okay, so the Koopman matrix K, and I'm not going to derive this again, but we have seen this is psi x pseudo inverse times psi y. And what I can do now is I can insert my definitions here, but before I do so, I do a little trick with the transpose transposing of the matrices. So I'm swapping the order and putting the transpose on them, psi x transposed, pseudo inverse transposed, which then gives me, this is my psi y transpose is exactly my y matrix, and my psi x transpose is exactly my x matrix. So what I get is, um, excuse me, y x pseudo inverse transpose, which is, if we look at this here, the DMD matrix transpose. Okay, so DMD gives me um, the same matrix under a very special dictionary, just transpose. And what we can now do is we can also study the eigen decomposition. to see what the eigenvectors of the DMD matrix are in our Koopman language, okay? So let's just study um, K DMD times an eigenvector V I. And I'm just, you know, transposing some stuff. So what I'm getting is um, V I transposed K D D transposed. So I'm swapping the order transposing, so this is exactly the same. And what you see now is if I'm taking the transpose matrix, my KDMD matrix becomes the K matrix. Okay. So what this means is this becomes K. And this is now a left eigenvector. Okay. So what I'm getting is W i star times the k matrix transpose. And now we know that if it's a left eigenvector, we can still, the eigenvalue is the same. So what I'm getting is lambda i times w i transpose. And so if I do this, I can see that the eigenvalue equation for k dmd is lambda i times v. Okay, so this is equal to this, and by this relation we see, in fact, that eigenvectors of the DMD matrix are left eigenvectors of the, um, the, the K matrix, the, the, the Koopman matrix. And so here's the conclusion that the DMD eigenvectors are our Koopman modes. Why? 
because what we had before was we needed our Koopman modes were v uh, equal to the right eigenvectors times the basis matrix, right? So what we had was v was equal to w star times the b matrix. But because we have picked this very specific dictionary, the B matrix is in fact a diagonal matrix, so the identity matrix, okay? And so this one is the identity, and we see that the eigenvectors, so the V here is the, what we call the Koopman modes before, don't comp uh, confuse this with the, the eigenvectors of the DMD matrix, but as you see, they are in fact the same, right? So this V means exactly this V here, and so what we get using DMD is an approximation of the Koopman eigenvalues and the Koopman modes, but under the assumption that this dictionary is rather restrictive. Still, it's very useful in particular in systems like fluid mechanics or, or climate simulations. So I hope this gives you a nice relation between these two concepts. Thanks for your attention, and we are going to consider kernel EDMT and more advanced techniques in the following videos. Thanks a lot.